Now let's look at examples of graphing ellipses and hyperbolas. We start out doing very similar things with the two graphs, so let's look at two very similar examples. But one will be an ellipse and one will be a hyperbola. We take very similar steps to begin these two graphs, so we'll look at the examples side by side. We want to recognize that the graph of the ellipse will have an x squared plus y squared in numerators with different denominators equaling 1. And the only difference when it comes to the hyperbola is that we now have a difference instead of a sum. So x squared over 9 minus y squared over 16 equals 1 will produce the graph of a hyperbola. The first step to making each graph is to understand a and b. a is always the larger denominator, and actually the denominator is a squared, and the smaller denominator is b squared. This example holds true in both cases. So now let's find the actual values for a and b. Just take the square root. a is 4, b is 3. And again, same thing on this side. Now a and b tell us how many units from the center we need to move to find the beginning of our shape. a, the larger value, is the denominator of y squared. So a represents the number of units away from the center on the y-axis moving vertically. From the center, I'll go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and make a point. Down from the center, 1, 2, 3, 4, and make a point. We actually would do the exact same thing with the hyperbola. a is in the denominator of y squared, so we're moving vertically on the y-axis. Up 4, down 4. Let's take care of the same moves on the x-axis. b equals 3, so 3 units to the left and right. Same thing for the hyperbola. Now it's at this point where we have to do things differently. For the ellipse, we have enough information to begin sketching the graph. Using short strokes, I can make this into a round shape. But for the hyperbola, we know that it has two branches. What we do with these points is first we make that box. Again, it's not part of our graph, just helping us see where the branches of the hyperbola go. Now from this box, we need to draw our asymptotes that go corner to corner through the center. Now that the asymptotes are in place, we need to see which variable was in the positive term because that tells us which axis is our transverse axis. We have an x squared. Starting the equation with an x squared means that our hyperbola is symmetric on the x-axis. The transverse axis is the x-axis. It's horizontal. So we're making branches starting from this point and moving out and alongside the asymptotes. There's our right branch of the hyperbola. And from this way, the left branch of the hyperbola. The graph won't actually cross those asymptotes. They just run right alongside it. And the further we go, the closer they get to the asymptote, but they never cross. So we have two finished graphs, one for the ellipse, one for the hyperbola. And hopefully you've seen how similar our steps are for getting to the sketch of the graph. With the ellipse, we close up the shape with those four points that we found from A and B. With the hyperbola, we have a couple of extra steps. Make the box to be able to find the two asymptotes of the graph, and then begin the sketch, which we know will have two separate branches. Now let's look at another example where our center is not at the origin. We recognize that by these quantities in parentheses. Our standard form equations show x minus h squared and y minus k squared, where the coordinates h, k are the center. Remember, the form uses subtracts, so x minus h, h is 3. y plus 2 is basically y minus negative 2. So k, the y coordinate, is negative 2. So that's our first move to spot where the center is. Positive 3 for the x, negative 2 for the y. Let's put a point for the center. It's working the exact same way for this equation for the hyperbola. The rest of the steps are going to be just like what we did with the previous example. Let's figure out a and b. Now be cautious. Well, let's go to the larger number a. So this is a squared in the denominator, means that a equals 5 both ways. b looks like it's 5. Remember, this is b squared, so actually b is the square root of 5. 
be cautious that what we see in the denominator is always a squared and b squared. And to talk about actual a and b, we need to take the square roots. And since we're making a graph, I'll approximate radical 5 is about 2.2. Same thing over here. b is about 2.2. We're going to use a and b as how many units away from the center. Since a is under the y coordinate, that's a vertical move. Up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And down the same thing. And the graph of the hyperbola, exactly the same thing going on here. Now let's go for the horizontal move. Under the x variable is b, about 2.2. So we'll move to the left and right, 2 and a tiny bit more. It's a graph by hand, so we don't have to be super precise, but I would definitely want to see a point that's looking like a little bit bigger than 2. Now we're ready to start wrapping up the ellipse graph. Once we have these points, we are trying to connect them with a round shape. Hopefully we can make this a very symmetrical shape also. But with the hyperbola there are a few extra steps. We need to make the box that will lead us to the asymptotes. Then the asymptotes always from one corner through the center to the other. And now we can make the graph. Now let's look at some examples where we will take an equation that is not in a proper form for graphing, and we'll need to get it there using completing the square.